Hey guys, welcome back and it's the last but one stage of the Hive project where we'll be furnishing the Hive with railings that would keep the beekeeping frames in place. Stay tuned and let's get to it. Okay, in order to add the frame supporting structures, we have the following two options. Option A would be to put solid board all the way from the frame to the bottom of the hive to support the weight of the frames. Or option B would be to just add a strip of wood and leave empty space below. And there are pros and cons of uh, each solution. One huge benefit of option A would be a virtually unlimited weight limit because of uh, the compression here is negligible no matter how many kilos of uh, bees and honey and beeswax i hang up here since the board reaches all the way to the bottom it could handle any weight base which is not true for the narrow strip of wood in case b another benefit of option a would be reduced airspace inside the hive which means less airspace for the bees to keep warm in winter so it would aid them in overwintering. In option B, they would have uh, a little bit larger airspace to keep warm. However, a drawback of option A would be increased weight. Just about 5 kilos of dead weight should be calculated if I chose option A. And of course, more labor, more wood to spend. And I'm quite short on uh, scrap wood, to be honest. And what I'm even more short of is time. So let's choose the quicker option, option B, and hope that a few screws and bolts here will help us in supporting all the frames. One beekeeping frame, which I marked in uh, red here, can weigh up to four kilos when packed full of honey. If I suppose that everything is full of honey, then it should come up to 40 kilos. That's the weight limit I would physically be capable of uh, putting in the box. And 40 kilos divided by 2, because I have two struts here, I mean two railings on both sides, would come down to 20 kilos to each side. A few screws should be able to withstand uh, 20 kilos of pull. At least that's the plan. Let's see the benefits and drawbacks of the options. To sum it up, option A is stronger, so that's a plus. It also leaves less... Uh, volume of air for bees to keep warm but on the contrary it's small volume of wood which i am short of and of course another drawback is it's more time consuming on the other hand option b is a bit weaker or or is it i'm not quite sure a drawback is that it there's more volume of air for the bees to keep warm but at least it's uh, less wood consuming and of course, it's less time consuming. So let's try and make it. And of course, it's not just wood. So let's suppose that this is the edge of the board. I mean, the box itself. And we are adding a strip of wood here, fastened with screws. There is one very important thing to consider. If I just uh, hang the frames from here, the bees would be subject to a constant threat of uh, being crushed under the weight of the frame. And of course, bees would uh, use propolis to glue everything to everything inside the hive. So this would be very difficult to move afterward. But there's a technique beekeepers use to hang the frames safely inside hives, which is adding a strip of steel here, like that. Of course, this could be fastened through a hole to the strip of wood, which could be fastened to the outer shell and then this is where you put the frames like that you hang the frames directly from the sheet metal which not only minimizes the amount of propolis bees are able to put here between the frame and the support bar but also bees would nicely fit here and escape any crushing when the beekeeper hangs the frames inside the hive and that's kind of important because if you don't have this this has happened to me so it's i'm, I'm speaking from experience <laughs> if you don't have any sheet metal here 
just uh, bare bees then you hang the frames and if you crush one bee then it will release stress pheromones instantly as it is uh, dying or she is dying and her friends will kind of smell the death pheromones or stress pheromones and come and investigate and of course they will possibly try to help her of course it will be quite late by that time but uh, they will pop up like that one by one and basically within three seconds you will have a bunch of bees looking to investigate what's happening they will be quite alarmed because of the alarm pheromone the dying bee has just released they will look for any threat and that's the beekeeper in their eyes and that's not good news i have seen this <laughs> so instantly if they begin popping up like pit 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 that's the moment you want to close back the lid on the hive and uh, <laughs> just uh, go for a coffee break or something like that but having a piece of sheet metal here like that will save the bee from being crushed and save you from some stings okay let's try and make it let's go fire up the bandsaw <laughs> Now the reason why I did not mind using such a heavily used piece for the support bars is that I was planning or I'm still planning to chop this off in a 45 degree angle and let me show you why I want to do that. Okay, so the reason behind me cutting this uh, 40 degree bevel on the bottom of the support bars is that I'm hoping to cut down on Wildcom. Let me show you what Wildcom is. So in an ideal situation, this is where you expect the comb to be like that. Let's suppose these are hexagons. And if there is ample space next to the frames itself or anywhere in the vicinity of other combs, then bees will try and find a way to put extra honeycomb in every inch of extra space there is which uh, you will have to cut out with a knife and it gets in the way and if there's honey then you get a lot of honey drippage if there's brood in it then there will be a loss of brood so wild comb is a big no-no in beekeeping that's why i made this support bar so that it would have a 40 degree bevel at the bottom which will hopefully dissuade the bees from building anything on the bottom of that. Well, at least it's not horizontal, so it would be more difficult to stick their wild comb onto it. We'll see in real life how it might work out. But that's the plan. That's why I made this 40 degree bevel here.
So this is it. The hive is functional. I have this metal strip here. That's where beekeeping frames will sit. And this is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is the main design feature here. Even if I pull on these frames, of course, if I push on them, they will snug up to the wall of the hive right there. But if I pull on them, still they won't fall inside because we still have this three millimeters here. And that's it, basically. Here we have the beekeeping frames. This lower portion is the foundation here, which is a printed beeswax sheet, and the deeper part has already been drawn out by the bees. Okay. To be honest, I'm quite satisfied with the results. Here we still have space for the feeder and the lid. Well, if you liked what you've seen, then please consider smashing the like button or even hitting subscribe for that matter. And next time we'll paint it to some nice beekeeping color. As for the comments down below, please feel free to suggest any color. Don't forget to tell me why you think that particular color would be suitable for beekeeping. I have some ideas. Until then, see you next time.